In this lecture, we'll be delving into the second derivative test. So let's think about a function, f, that has a second derivative. What does the second derivative tell us about the function? Well, consider the case where you have a positive second derivative. What does that mean? The derivative, the second derivative, is the derivative of f prime. That means the derivative of f prime is positive, which means that f prime of x is an increasing function on i. Well, let's think about what this would mean graphically. You have, let's say, let's say you're at this point here. Why don't we call that x1? Since the derivative, since f prime of x is an increasing function, if we were to draw the slope of the tangent line, say here, so suppose that the slope of our tangent line is like this. So that's our tangent line at x equals x1. If we were to look at the tangent line at another point to the right of x1, say x2, at this point, let's think about the slope of the tangent line. This first tangent line, its slope is f prime of x1. Our new tangent line at this point has slope of f prime of x2. And note I, I should have written f prime of x1 here. But f prime is an increasing function. Since x2 is bigger than x1, it's to the right of x1, because f prime is an increasing function, f prime of x1 has to be smaller than f prime of x2. Well, what does that mean? It means the slope of the tangent line at x1 is smaller than the slope of the tangent line at x2. So at x2, when we draw the tangent line, we need to have a larger slope. And this continues as we move across. So if we're at another point, say x3, at that point on the graph of the function, the tangent line will have to be even bigger. So maybe at this point, maybe it becomes positive. The way we were thinking of it here, this, this had a negative slope. Say it was minus 1. This slope might, it was smaller. Maybe it looks like minus a fourth. Here, the slope might be something like a half. And then maybe if we go to another point, maybe our tangent line has a slope of 1. But the idea here is that the function so if we actually now draw the function itself, so we'll draw it in purple, it has to have this upward bending property about it. So this condition that the derivative, the second derivative of f is positive on this interval tells us the graph of y equals f of x bends upwards. On i. Later on, we'll give a formal name to it. We'll actually call it concave up. 
this is the but this is the idea. And again, it all comes down to the fact that if f double prime is positive, that means Remember, it's the derivative of f prime. So f prime is an increasing function on i because of this. And as you move from left to right, the slopes of your tangent lines have to be getting steeper. They have to be increasing, which results in this upward bendiness of the function's graph. In this case, where the second derivative of f is negative, this tells us that f prime of x is a decreasing function. And so that means if x1 is less than x2, then f of x1 is bigger. Sorry, f prime of x1 is bigger than f prime of x2. So in other words, the slope of the tangent line for x1 has to be bigger than the slope of the tangent line for x2. And we can again draw this kind of example. So suppose here's x1 and here's x2. If the slope of the tangent line in x1 looks like this, as we move from x1 to x2, the, the tangent line slopes have to become more negative. They have to decrease. So we have a steeper slope. If we go to x3, again, we must have a steeper slope. Again, a more negative slope. So the slope is decreasing. So like here, you might think this slope might be minus a half, this slope might be minus four, this slope might be minus 10. The slopes of these tangent lines are decreasing as we move to the right. And if you graph the result of this is this downward bending graph. And again, we'll, we'll give a name to this. We'll, we'll, we'll call this downward, con downward concavity, but you have this for now, we'll just call it this downward bending curvature. Now, as an example, let's look at y equals x cubed. We can calculate our derivative. f prime of x is 3x squared, and f double prime of x is 6x. And we see that f double prime of x is positive if x is positive. So plug in a positive number, you get a positive second derivative. And it's negative if x is negative. And we know what this looks like. This is a graph, a function that we're used to dealing with. And we can see how this graph we're familiar with syncs up with things that we just talked about. So here we can see this bending upwards of the graph. And over here we see the graph is bending downwards. And we see how it syncs up with the sign of the second derivative. Let's think about critical points now. So suppose you have a differentiable function f of x with a critical point c. Now remember, what does it mean to be a critical, critical point? It means either f prime of x is 0 or f prime of x does not exist. Here we're saying the function is differentiable, so the derivative, f prime, exists everywhere in its domain. Now, we noticed through some examples that c, you may or may not have a local extremum at c at your critical point. And the perfect example of this was this previous example. We noted 
that f prime of 0 is 0. If you plug in 0 here, and 0, x equals 0, or maybe we'll just say it a little more generally, the point 0, 0 is not an extremum. But it is a critical point. And we see here the tangent line is, in fact, horizontal at the origin. But it's not an extremum because if you move a little bit to the right, you go up. So it can't be a maximum, a local maximum. If you move a little bit to the left, you go down. So it can't be a local minimum. It can't be either. But so we do have these cases where uh, a critical point is not an extremum. But let's think about how we can use the information in this second derivative this curvature of the function to try to identify what's going on at one of these extreme or at one of these critical points. So suppose we have suppose that the graph of y equals f of x has this upward bending property So on an interval that contains C. So we have a critical point C. So since it's a critical point and since the function is differentiable, we know that the tangent line is horizontal. But we're saying we found some interval, which we're calling i, and the graph has this upward bending nature over that interval. Well, if we graph the function, we have this horizontal tangent line at c because it's a critical point, but we also know it's upward bending and hopefully that illustrates that this confirms for us that the point CF of C would be a local minimum. And that is the second derivative test. So the second derivative test for local extrema, assume that F is twice, twice differentiable, so that just means it has a second derivative on an open interval I containing the critical point C. So it's important to note, we've already found this critical point where f prime of c equals 0. Then we have the following. If f double prime of x is greater than 0 on i, then f of c is the minimum value of f of x on i. And again, that's the picture. 1 is the picture we just drew where we said we had this interval i. Since the tangent line is horizontal and it has this upward bendiness on I, it has to be a minimum. In fact, it's a, it's a local minimum. It's, an, it's a minimum on I, but that's the definition of a local minimum. You just have to find a little interval where this thing is an extreme value. The other piece of this theorem, so 2 is just the, the just basically flip this picture so your f of c is here and again in this case the tangent line is horizontal but the function because the second derivative is negative has this downward bending curvature and that means that it has to be a local maximum value. So when we combine the second der derivative information with our critical points, we can identify local extrema if the second derivative is positive or if it's negative. Note that there's nothing in here about the second derivative being zero. If your second derivative is zero at a critical point, 
the second derivative test doesn't help you. You have to go back to the first derivative test. And a natural example for that is y equals x to the fourth. So let, let's take some derivatives. dy dx is 4x cubed. And the second derivative, d squared y dx squared, is 12x squared. Well, that means the second derivative we know at x equals 0 that that second derivative is 0. Right? We solve this being equal to 0. But what's going on with the graph? Well, we know this is what y equals x to the fourth looks like. And we know that the origin, not only is it a local, max, local minimum, it's the global minimum. But the second derivative being 0 didn't help us identify that. So for this function, you would have to go back to the first derivative test to figure out how to identify that. We also have the second derivative test for global extrema. This is worth mentioning because it's very similar to the test for local extrema. The only difference is we're saying these conditions hold on the entire domain. So again, you have a function f that's twice differentiable on the open interval i. Think of i as the domain containing one critical point c, where f prime of c equals 0. If f double prime of x has the same sign for all x in i, then f of c is an, ex is an absolute extremum of f on i. So here's the way to think of this. Let's look at each case. Let's look at one first. So again, think of i as the whole domain. And we have one value c, where we have a horizontal tangent line. So C is a critical point, so we have a horizontal tangent line. And we're told that F double prime of X is always positive, always, on the whole domain. So it always has this upward bending curvature, this concave up curvature. And it only has this one spot where it hits a horizontal tangent line. So the result is that the graph has to look something like this. And we see in this case that that point is the absolute minimum. For 2, it's the same idea. We just flip it upside down. So in this case, we would have our point C, F of C here. Because C is a critical point, we know that we have a horizontal tangent line, but we're told in this case that the second derivative is always negative, which means the curve, the curve is bending downwards. So the curve has to look something like this. And in that case, you have the global maximum occurring here at C, F of C. Okay. Let's use this in an example. Very standard kind of example. Let's find and classify the critical points of g of x. And remember, we already know how to do this with the first derivative test. But in this case, we're going to use the second derivative test. So first of all, we need the derivative. So g prime of x is 3x squared minus 3. We set that equal to 0 to find the critical points, which is 3x squared equals 3, or x squared equals 1. And we know that x equals 1 and x equals minus 1 solve that. So those are our two critical, our two critical point x values. And so our critical points 
we plug those into the function when we plug 1 in we get 1 plus 1 is 2 minus 3 so 2 minus 3 is minus 1 and when we plug minus 1 in we get minus 1 plus 3 which is 2 plus 1 which is 3 so we have our two critical points now it's going to be a question of what are they and we can classify them again using our second derivative test so the second derivative of g 2 times 3 is 6 x so plug the x values from these critical points into the second derivative g double prime of 1 is 6 which is positive really what we're arguing is because g double prime of 1 is positive numbers really close to 1 plugged in here will also be positive so this tells us that g the graph of g has this upward bending curvature around 1 which allows us to conclude that 1 minus 1 is a local minimum when we plug in the x value for the other critical point we get 6 times minus 1 or minus 6 which is negative and again we conclude that now minus 1 3 is a local maximum So over here at x equals minus 1, we know this is some kind of maximum. And then when x equals 1, we have some kind of minimum. So this is a, this is a very powerful tool for learning about functions behavior. This is a nice way to be able to check and classify critical points where you don't necessarily need the chart that, that's involved with the first derivative test. We will be expanding on this idea quite a bit in the next lecture when we formalize this idea of bending upward being called concave up and bending downward being called concave down. So we will deal with much more information on the second derivative and then we will be doing very lengthy examples of graphing functions, incorporating all of this information from both the first and the second derivative.